Hey everyone, my name is Tom Guo. Today I'll be presenting my project on the in-silico analysis of genetic variability and drugability of the influenza A virus pocketome. My project is conducted under the supervision of Dr. Shapira at University of Toronto. And here is a table of contents for my presentation. So influenza or the flu is a contagious respiratory infection that attacks your nose, throat, and lungs. The influenza virus can cause fever, chills, runny nose, sore throat, cough, and fatigue. The influenza A flu virus has been nearly impossible to eradicate, and it's largely due to its ability to mutate. Since 2004, more than 5,000 different strains of the influenza A virus have been sequenced. Those that affect humans are characterized as types A, B, and C. The A viruses are routinely spread in human population, and they are responsible for the outbreak of seasonal flu epidemics and pandemics every year. So one of the deadliest flu pandemics was caused um, by one such virus. Um, in, in 1918, Spanish flu infected a third of the global population and killed up to five, 50 million people worldwide. Because influenza A viruses can be broken down into many subtypes depending on the surface proteins, there's more genetic variability in influenza virus type A than type B and C. So due to its higher risk of infection and genetic diversity, my project will be focusing on influenza virus type A only. So influenza occurs globally, infecting up to one fifth of the world's population each year. Um, and these annual epidemics are estimated to result in about three to five million cases of severe disease and about 250 to 500,000 deaths each year. And um, some, some examples of the global pandemics caused by influenza A include the 1918 H1N1 outbreak and the 2009 H1N1 outbreak. And in addition, only about 40% of the Canadian adults get the flu vaccine every year, which is well under what's expected. So believing that influenza A will not be eradicated and will keep evolving, the need for the development of broad spectrum antiviral drugs is emphasized. So the approach to this is to identify drug binding sites in the influenza A proteome that are conserved across all influenza A virus strains. The influenza A virus is an enveloped virus consisting of more than 10 types of viral proteins. So therefore, the first step would be to find all potential binding pockets for one of the influenza A proteins. So the proteins that I will introduce today as examples of my work are the non-structural protein 1 and um, the nucleoprotein. So Therefore, the main aim of the project is to identify small molecule binding sites that are druggable in the influenza A virus pockets that are conserved across all strains. To achieve, there are four steps. The first is to find all binding pockets that, um, for each of the protein that make up the influenza virus. Next, the druggability potential of each binding pocket needs to be assessed if there are no available drugs identified in that binding pocket. Then the genetic variability of residues lining the pocket is determined across all strains. The last step is to assess the impact of such mutations of the residues on the binding pocket. So the whole in silico project relies heavily on a program known as icm Pro To identify the binding pockets, Protein structures are derived from the PDB protein data bank and visualized in ICM Pro. Then the binding pockets are identified using ICM pocket finder function based on criteria such as size, hydrophobicity, charge, and so on. 
The trickability scores and trickability potential are determined using program known, known as sitemap. To analyze the genetic variation across all strains, protein sequences of influenza A viral strains are downloaded from the NCBI database. And multiple sequence alignment is performed using K-line. Next, the sequence of interest is linked to the multiple sequence alignment, and ICM can generate a conservation table based on a script I wrote. Finally, certain residues can be selectively mutated to assess the importance of these residues on ligand binding. So the first protein is the nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein, as we can see in the top right figure from influenza A virus, is a structural protein that encapsulates and protects the viral RNA content from loss and degradation. The nucleoprotein protected viral RNA of influenza A is also known as the ribonucleoprotein, functioning as a template for transcription inside the host cell. So each nucleoprotein monomer, as we can see in the middle, has three domains, a helical body domain, a helical head domain, and a tail loop. The tail loop inserts itself into the neighboring nucleoprotein molecule to form oligomers. RNA associates with the nucleoprotein with high affinity through the positively charged groove, as we can see um, in the bottom right figure that are colored blue. So those are positively charged and that's located between the head and body domains. So the influenza A virus um, can exist in either the monomeric form or trimeric form, and the monomers can self-polymerize onto RNA to form, to form the complexes, while the trimers can only bind to RNA. So this multifunctional nature um, allows nuclear protein to be an attractive therapeutic target for antiviral medications. So this small molecule known as nucleosine was found to be a potent inhibitor of influenza A nuclear proteins. And that induces large aggregates of nuclear protein. So as we can see in this um, figure, two nucleosine molecules act as a bridge between two trimers of nuclear protein to form a dimer of trimers. So therefore, nuclear proteins cannot bind to RNA and viral transcription will be suppressed. The binding pockets of the nucleosine binding pocket um, is formed by a combination of the Y289 um, N309 pocket from one nucleoprotein monomer and the R382 pocket from an adjacent nucleoprotein monomer through hydrophobic and weak polar interactions. So structurally similar to nucleosine, um, another inhibitor known as the nucleosine analog was discovered to interfere with nucleoprotein binding also through formation of um, nucleoprotein aggregation. But unlike nucleosine, two molecules of the nucleoproteins are bridged by two molecules of the nucleosine analogs to form a stable complex. So as we can see in this figure, two anti-parallel binding pockets are formed by the um, by the combination of the Y289 N309 pocket from one monomer and the Y52 pocket um, from another monomer and vice versa. The last molecule is FA6005 and this was discovered to act as a broad spectrum multimagnetic antiviral therapeutic agent. Um, and um, this FA6005 can inhibit influenza A virus transcription, disrupt the virus on cooling processes, and interfere with nuclear export. And it does that through binding to a pocket and targeting a um, 
residue that's um, known as the I-41. So the drug ability scores of this um, nucleosine, the nucleus analog, and the FA6005 binding pockets were not calculated because available drugs have already been identified. Um, so that so we can assume that the pockets are are already druggable. So um, the binding pocket of nucleosine is lined with the residues that are depicted um, in the picture on the right. So residues that are coming from different subunits are colored differently. And certain residues that have non-conserved mutations are also colored red. And on the left picture, we can see the pocket um, in between the two trimers. And a multiple sequence alignment indicates a 84% sequence identity and a 94% sequence conservation among the three among the 33 residues lining the nucleus in binding pocket. So out of these 33, 94% um, are almost completely conserved across influenza A viruses. However, genetic variability is, is observed at residues R350 and R384. So while this structure contains these residues, other influenza A strains have non-conserved single amino acid substitutions at these positions. Therefore, the effect of this of these genetic variation um, on the nucleosine binding will be evaluated using ICM function. So the result, um, as shown in the table below, um, shows minimal change that is less than two in free binding energy following non-conserved substitutions at these two residue positions. So mutations at um, these non-conserved sites of the nucleus in binding pocket are likely to have very minimal impact on ligand binding. So the binding pocket of nucleus in analog is aligned with the residues that are showing on the right and we can see the pocket on the left. A multiple sequence alignment indicates a 71% sequence identity and 83% conservation among the 24 residues lining the nucleosine analog binding pocket. So out of the 24 amino acid residues, 83 are almost completely conserved. However, genetic variability is also observed at residues Y52, Y313, E375, and S377. So other strains have non conserved single amino acid substitutions at, at these positions. Therefore, we evaluate the effect of this genetic variation, and the result shows um, considerable change that are more than two in free binding energy following non-conserved substitutions. So it is interesting to note that um, the moiety of nucleosine analog exhibits a hydrophobic interaction with, y, with Y52 of the nucleo protein B subunit. So sequence analysis of multiple resistant viruses identified nuclear protein substitutions at Y52 as potential markers for drug resistance. And that's consistent with the result we obtained from ICM. As a result, mutations at half of the non-conserved sites of nucleus and analog binding pocket are likely to have significant impact on ligand binding, suggesting that this binding pocket um, will not be a good candidate target site for drug development. And the last pocket, um, the pocket of FA6005 is lined with the residues that are shown on the right. And we can see the pocket itself on the left. 
and multiple sequence alignment indicates 81% identity and 93% residue conservation among the 28 residues. So out of the 28, 93 are completely conserved. Um, however, genetic variability is observed at um, positions A286 and T472. And so we evaluate the effect of genetic variation at these positions. And the result shows minimal change that are less than two in free binding energy. So mutations at these non-conserved sites of FA6005 binding pocket are likely to have very minimal impact on ligand like binding. So the second protein that I worked on is the non-structural protein one of influenza type A, B, and C viruses. Um, and this is a virus, this is a protein coming from the virus that is a non-structural non protein that is able to block immune responses from the host. And as we can see um, in the de depicted, um, each non-structural um, protein one consists of an RNA binding domain, an effector domain, and a flexible linker region separating the two. While the RNA binding domain provides the base for the formation of um, protein dimers, the effector domain facilitates the interaction with RNA and a wide range of host cellular ligands. And this protein blocks host antiviral response through multiple mechanisms that I will introduce um, next. So, non-structural protein one monomer itself can constitutively form homodimers in the host cell to allow interaction with a wide range of host antiviral factors. And that's mediated by a high affinity interaction between um, the two RNA binding domains. So as we can see in the depicted the trim tripartite motive proteins are a family of E3 ubiquitin ligases that can regulate human immune signaling pathways. And the pathway can lead to the induction of type 1 interferon response and the production of cytokines. Therefore, non structural protein 1 prevents the formation of antiviral transduction signal by inhibiting the trim 25 mediated ubiquitination um, structure shown here. Um, it shows that each non-structural protein one monomer binds to a trim 25 dimer through two separate interfaces. Um, the human phosphoenositide three kinase is a it's an enzyme consisting of a regu regulatory P85 beta subunit. So the binding of non-structural protein one to the P85 beta subunit of PI3K activates the PI3K signaling pathway. And the pathway results in delayed cellular ap apoptosis. So this um, becomes an important advantage for influenza A virus in competing with the host immune system. So the 30 um, kilodalton cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor, known as the CPSF30, are cellular proteins required for the three end processing of pre mRNAs in the host cell. So as we can see in the depicted, it shows that non-structural protein 1 inhibits post-transcriptional processing of pre-mRNAs by binding to the CPSF30 factors. So that will result in the accumulation of unprocessed pre-mRNAs in the host nucleus. Um, however, the viral protein synthesis will not be affected by the inhibition of this CPSF30 factor. 
The drugability score of the human P85 beta subunit binding pocket was determined to be 1.05 using sitemap. And the drugability score of the human CPS of 30 binding pocket was determined to be 0 0.843 using sitemap. The drugability of the human TRIM25 binding pocket was not calculated because no pocket was identified by ICM pocket finder function. You know, on the two figures depicted on the right, we can see the, the drugability scores um, of the pocket showing in the figure. So the binding pocket of human P85 beta subunit is aligned with the residues that are showing on the right. And again, residues coming from two different subunits are colored differently. And um, those non-conserved mutations positions are colored in red. A multiple sequence alignment indicates a 59% sequence identity and 76% sequence conservation among the 34 residues lining the human P85 beta subunit binding pocket. Um, however, genetic variability is still observed at residues A86, S135, T143, and L166. So other influenza A strains have non-conserved single amino acid substitutions at these positions. Um, therefore, mutations at these sites are likely to have an impact on ligand binding. And because no drugs have been identified in this um, binding pocket, it wouldn't make sense to run the um, mutational studies on these um, non-conserved sites. So although these mutations um, may disrupt the stability of ligand binding, the drugability score and conservation of the pocket suggest that this binding site is still a good candidate target site. Um, the binding pocket of human CPSF30 factors is lined with residues that are shown on the right. And you can see the pocket, um, very small, two lobes on the left. A multiple sequence alignment indicates a 54% sequence identity and 100% sequence conservation. So 100% residues are almost completely conserved among all influenza A viruses. So therefore mutations at the conserved sites of the human CPSF30 binding pocket are very likely to have no impact on ligand binding. The trackability score and conservation of residues suggest that this binding site can be a potential candidate target site for drug development. So just to summarize our results from the trackability analysis, um, we find that the nucleosine binding pocket, the nucleosine analog binding pockets and the FA6005 binding pockets are druggable because um, there have been drugs identified in those positions. And um, based on the drug quality scores, we find that human P85 beta subunit binding pocket is druggable, while the human CPSF30 binding pocket is very difficult to drug. And through our conservation analysis, we find that the nucleosin binding pocket, um, the FA6005 binding pocket, and the human P85 beta subunit binding pocket are good candidate target sites. And um, the nucleosin analog binding pocket is not likely a target site um, due to its um, due to due to the mutations that are not conserved. And the human CPS of 30 binding pocket um, is well conserved. However, it is difficult to drug. So in conclusion, because our project has been focusing on the analysis of influenza A pocketome, the results can be summarized by comparing different pockets by genetic variation. 
The graph de depicted can help us assess which target may be a good candidate site for the development of pan-influenza A virus inhibitors. So all of these pockets showing are druggable. And in particular, we find that um, from the figure that the polymerase acidic protein um, and also the polymerase basic protein two pockets are among the most conserved um, across the influenza A strains. And that indicates um, that pharmacologically targeting the viral RNA transcription and translation process will be a promising avenue for the discovery of pan-influenza A drugs, as these two protein pockets are involved in those processes. And in addition, we can also observe a trend on the graph. The pocket that has more percent residues that are identical is also likely to have more percent residues that are conserved. So the method of system, systematically map the genetic variability of putative influenza A drug binding sites onto the influenza A proteome reveals effective in silico chemistry strategies for the drug development. Therefore, these findings encourage the greater involvement of these in silico virtual screening methods in the drug discovery for common viruses. And here is a list of references. And finally, thank you for listening and a special thanks to Dr. Matthew Shapiro's guidance throughout the project and the PCL 472 coordinating team.